So how should we how should we start this off? Um, with a sync clap. What's up, guys? I'm with my good friend here, John Schmidt, writer, director, producer, everything. This guy does it all. No, a little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. A little bit of everything. Um, tonight we are starting the kind of behind the scenes sort of uh, our process for a short film that John wrote and directed. Invaders. Invaders. I'm doing the uh, big chunk of the effects for this. Most of it, yeah. And what else? What else do I want to talk about? Uh, well, it's like it's about a seven and a half minute short, and it has 75 effect shots in it, so it's really, really heavy on the special effects. And this is the first short I've ever done that had any special effects. I always shied away from them because it was really intimidating. I didn't know much about them, so the, every step of this process is new to me. Nice. And since we have so many special effects shots, I wanted to learn, I wanted to try and help out as much as I can. And I know rotoscoping is something that anyone can kind of pick up with a little bit of practice. So Ryan's going to teach me how to rotoscope. So once we're to that, <laughs> once we're to that, that step of the process, I can help out and try and take some of the, some of the, you know, workload from him. So his skills can be better put towards like the, all the animating and modeling and stuff like that. And you don't have to waste your time on rotoing as much. So, Sounds good. Yeah. So there you have it. We're gonna switch over now to After Effects. So do you want to talk about what this clip is? Uh, yeah, this is just a, a temp edit of our uh, a little montage scene in the in the movie uh, Invaders, and it's about a a kid who has to fight these kind of eight bit like aliens that invade Earth, and the only thing that kills them are his vi old vintage video game equipment. Uh, and the music in here, obviously, we don't have the rights to. It's just a temp track uh, to edit to. But what we're going to do here is roto out the uh, power glove in the very last shot here. And we think that will be a, be a good example to do. All right, so just like John said, we're using this as an example to uh, show uh, we're getting ready to start our short film. And this is also just a rotoscoping tutorial and some of the tips and tricks that I like to use. <laughs> Here we are again, uh, doing this tutorial for the first time. Yep. <laughs> definitely, we, definitely not the third time that we've tried this. We have, we have not had any problems recording nope. this. Smooth sailing. Exactly. All right. So, going to bring in our footage. Here's the clip that we were talking about earlier. Um, dragging it down here to make a new composition. With the composition size, 1920 by 800 because... Cinemascope. And why is it Cinemascope? Because it was shot on the Red Epic. It's giant <laughs> red snobs and there, there is no other camera. Except GH2 is pretty good. I Thank heard, you. I heard, Thank I heard things. I like my GH2. See, me, people don't know that we've told that joke to ourselves like three or four yeah. times now. But That's it's right. Still, it's still funny, I think. It's true. All right, so what I did is I brought this over to trim our work area down. I'm going to right click, trim comp to work area. All right, so we know this is the shot that we are going to rotoscope. Oh, we don't need all this black either. So I'm going to push N to bring the other one over. Hold shift to snap that there. Trim comp to work area. All right, so the first thing we need to do with any rotoscoping is there's either object movement or camera movement. If we can eliminate one or both of those, half our work is done. Sounds good. Okay. So, what like what program do you use to track it, and uh, like, are, what are the options of like different programs out there? Well, a um, couple of the trackers we can use is the After Effects tracker, point, which is a point tracker, judging uh, contrast, points of contrast, or there's Mocha, which is a planar tracker, which is going to look at the area of the glove. Look at that, it did it for us. Wow, it's that good. Like, we've ne like we haven't done this yeah. before. Yeah, wow. So yeah, this is looking at the whole plane of the glove versus a single point. So you know what? We actually haven't done this. Let's, let's switch it up and we'll do a point tracker on the glove. So the object okay. is to roto the glove. So I'm gonna right click on our footage, track motion, and then here we have our point tracker. So what we're looking at is for a point of contrast. And it's not super contrasty, but this red dot should work just fine. Um, this enables the search area in between there. Okay. And this is more the, you know, the selected point. 
So it's going to search in this big area, but it's looking for that small point. Okay. So if it's super shaky, you want this larger. Oh, okay. But the, there, this is a fairly exactly. So I'm not. Yes, yeah, so I'm not going to have it too much. And since you know, if you have it huge like this, it's just more processing and more time. Okay. Is Does that increase the chances of the track not not going very well or? Um, it can, yeah, because if you have a if you have a lot of cam movement that large, it usually implies you have a lot of motion blur, oh, and that's okay. that's a whole other difficult. Yeah. Yeah, it's a whole other problem. So, all right, normally this screen isn't open. So if you go to Window, and select your Tracker panel. Okay. We have our Tracker one selected. All we really need is the position because we know there's not scale or rotation mm -hmm. here. All right, and so all we're going to do is analyze the movie. Hey. Yay! All right, so we go, you know, and you can kind of watch it and analyze and see how it's working, but it looks like we're doing pretty well, mm -hmm. staying right on there. Um, and I guess we can fast forward through this. All right, so the track's done. We can scrub back through this to see how it does. And I mean, it's looking great. So what we're going to do now, layer, new, null object. We need somewhere to put our tracking data. And it's always a good habit to use a null object versus the actual footage. And so back in our tracker panel, we'll edit the target, null one. OK. And then click Apply. Apply X and Y. Yeah, do it. All right, so now our null object is on the glove. Okay. All right, so next step, instead of putting masks on the actual footage, what I like to do is make a new solid and do all the rotoscoping on a solid. Actually, you know what? Let's make it red just so we can see it. Oops. All right, so there's a red solid. What I like to do is just, you know, scale it up to make it really large because you never know if you're going to have to add more points. Then I'm going to turn it off. Select the solid, and we are going to make our first mask points. Now, obviously, anyone else rotoscoping their projects, you're going to want to take your time to refine these, these points. But the goal here is to have enough points to cover what we want to roto without having too many. More points means more keyframes we have to move around each point so we made those key points to our solid let's turn back on i'm going to turn the opacity down just a little bit and i'm going to parent that to our tracking data all right so right off the bat let's see how well our mask is doing without any any keyframing And it's doing pretty good. It's staying on there pretty, you know, drops off a little bit right here, but I mean, the glove is moving and oh, yeah, changing a little bit. I mean, we have a lot of points up until here, we don't really need to do a whole lot. So, uh, the first thing we need to do is troll down our properties here, go to masks. This is our first mask right here. You can turn it on with this little button right here, or push shift command H to turn it on and off. And Bring that down, and now what we want to do is animate the path of this, this mask over time. So I'm going to start the stopwatch right there. And instead of just going you know, frame by frame here and adding points, I usually like to start with the beginning and the end, and then keep dividing it up. And maybe it'll take care of some of the work, take care of some of the work for you. Exact, exactly. Hopefully it interpolates a lot of that. So all I'm pushing right now is Alt, click to select the whole mask. And then when I want to do separate points, I'm just going to shift, click, and then I can highlight whatever points I need here. Shift, click again to do individual points. Or you can do a bunch like that. And so this is kind of the process now of just, you know, going through each point and just lining it up to where what you need to roto. Now if, uh like the beginning of the shot, the glove was cut off from the beginning, and so we had a flat, you know, top of the screen, and then the glove comes down and it's, you know, a different shape. What what if you had to add more points to define the top of that glove a little bit more? That is a good, good question. Well, thank you. Um, we basically have two options, and, you know, certain situations might be harder than others. Um, 
and so we'll obviously we'll see we're running into that problem right now but let's say okay so we need another point right here if this was a big area we could always add another mask mm -hmm. but since we're right here I'm just gonna go from the arrow tool to the pen tool you see that plus sign it's gonna let me add a new one okay. and push V to go back to the arrow tool and I'm just gonna move that up normally you don't want to do that uh, you want to just probably make a new mask but uh, here no problem it'll uh, it'll go with the rest of our mask just fine okay so I'm pushing U to look at the keyframes of our mask. And now I'm just going to kind of go to the middle of the shot because I know it's going to drop a little bit. Mm -hmm. Bring those back up and just kind of start the process over again. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking this curve right here, and this point. It up. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of judging everything off of that. I'm just going to select all these. And that, that does curve down a little bit, but you know. You know, this is just a f easy, quick tutorial on getting into rotoscoping. Move this one back over. This back down. And I'm going to toggle the points on and off. You know, this is kind of coming out here just a little bit. And this is just nitpicky, but you want to do this for your actual projects. Man, I just see this stuff and I just want to fix it. All right, so... Let's just move on. That's that's good for now. Cool. All right, so I'm just gonna start the process over again. See where it's kind of dipping down. So staying, staying, staying. Kind of everything's a little off track there. So again, just go into the middle of those keyframes. Okay, so let's say you got this perfect. You're good to go. It's looking great. Um, one of the things we could do is push F to get the mask feather, or you can just twirl down everything in the mask again. And we can just feather this off a little bit. Let's turn the opacity all the way back up. And now I'm gonna show you why we used a shape versus the actual footage. So if I turn the track mat to a alpha mat, there we go, the glove is separated by itself now. And that, didn't, that really didn't take us very long. Mm -hmm. I'm going to uh, duplicate the footage, making a new solid. Let's do blue, blue is fine. It's gonna scale it down a little bit so you can see that now we have something in between our, you know, foreground, and our background. Just and that didn't take long at all. And you know, we can always do easy adjustments like, you know, maybe we don't, we probably don't need to feather it that much, mm -hmm. you know. So there we go. That's basically, basically uh, all we need to talk about to get started for rotoscoping. And I guess one of the things we did talk about is, is uh, let's say I know I want this bottom rotoed now, mm -hmm. and we forgot to do that. Well, that's fine. You know, just just make a new mask right here. And this is on the same roto shape layer that we've been using. And then that's going to add that new mask. So, boom, there we go. And obviously, we need a keyframe that new mask. But you can, with that big, having that large solid, we're able to adjust the mask in larger chunks. So there we go. Cool. So again, uh, my name is Ryan Walker for uh, Phoenix Studios and MyPhoenix.com, and with our guest host and director, editor. Writer, John Schmidt. This guy is amazing. If you guys need an editor, director, writer, a creative guy who is very organized, by the way. Thank you. John Schmidt, Denver, Colorado. Man, thank you. Great and want, you want to <laughs> say anything else? Get, get going on my special. <laughs> Got a lot of work to do. And on that note, we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>